Vic was not your ordinary football coach. He was, he was extraordinary. Football was his calling. Uh, it was almost like a religion with Vic. If you had a talent, he would find you. Uh, he was the kind of person that would help you be better than what you think you could be. So committed to his love for football that nothing stood in his way of learning football. You will find out that in the midst of that school over there in Daly City, in foggy Daly City, that we had in our midst one of the greatest football minds to ever coach foot college football in Vic Rowan. So he goes into the war and for a while he played, I think they had a some sort of a football team in World War II. Old time football was like uh, kind of a, maybe a very similar rugby. And so they would play it recreationally on the weekends. Once he was done with World War II, he finished up at uh, Long Island University, played football. He kept playing, so I think it just grew after the World War II. And then somewhere in that period, somebody talked to him about going to Columbia. And he was a very well-educated man and family man. But his football was his main mainstay. He had been at Defiance College where he had an undefeated team. He was the head coach. He came out then to San Francisco and joined uh, Joe Verducci in San Francisco State and became a huge, strong component uh, of the coaching staff. He owed a lot to Joe Verducci and bringing him in here to coach as well. Uh, so the two of them were great together and really could feel great teams. And in the 10 years that I was here all together as a student, teacher, coach, professor, we had won seven out of 10 championships in football. We were pretty darn good. I mean, really, it was almost like, I, I, we, it was a semi-pro team. It, it, we had some great athletes, some really outstanding linemen, running backs, Fuller, Simpson, oh, we had Jim Soaker, the quarterback. We, 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 had, we had just a super team. Vic Rowan's main attributes were uh, his, uh, his strength of conviction, his passion for the game. And uh, Joe really helped him along the way with some of Vic's shortcomings to get him more outgoing and more people-oriented, like, like Joe was. When I heard Joe Verducci was the big figure. He was an incredible uh, diplomat, coach, politician. You can imagine he's mayor, mayor of Daly City, supervisor of San Mateo. At the same time, he's here as a coach. And uh, he was also supervisor of San Mateo County when he was athletic director here. Phenomenal. Whereas Vic was all football. When Joe died, I think it was very sorrowful for Vic Rowan to, to have that occurrence. And he really believed in Coach Joe Reducci too. So when Vic became head coach, it was uh, just a total uh, commitment for everybody in the program. Vic was very capable and he was extremely capable as a head coach. But they knew the, how committed Vic was to the program and that he would be a, a wonderful guy to play for. When I first came here, there was 5,000 students. And then it started to grow. The 18 to 21 year olds that were into uh, the college experience. And we, they, would, they went to the basketball games, the football games. Uh, there were some fraternities, sororities. There was no money virtually in the program at all. There was no money for anything. You just did what you had to do on your own to get it all done. And Vic was famous for that. He was committed 24 hours, and because you were working with him, you were committed 24 hours. And, and we all had a passion for the game, but he, he was, his was extraordinary. His scope outside of family was very uh, focused. It was all football. That's, all, that's what he had a passion for. That's what he loved. That's his total enjoyment. And he had, I, when I say no other interests, that was his sole interest. And he was able to utilize his players in, in the offense and defenses much more effectively than, than most coaches because he knew the strengths and knew where to put people in the right positions to utilize their talents. He had the science of football down. He knew 
what would work and what wouldn't. So when you're winning, you know, everybody, everybody gets along. Uh, and so we won a lot of games and we played real hard and we worked real hard and spent a lot of time out on this field and the practice field over there. And it was, uh, you know, quite a time. I mean, we were the undefeated Far Western Conference champions. I was the last undefeated Far Western Conference championship team for the Golden Gators. We had one losing season, I can remember, 1969. That was during the strike. Berkeley was striking. San Francisco State was striking. Columbia University was striking. The students weren't going to classes. All the black athletes pulled out and supported the strike, and we were trying to run our football program with just almost half the team. When the strike came on, and it started with a year we went to the Community Bowl in 67, the next year in 68 when it hit the school, it uh, tore our football program apart. So when I was here at San Francisco State, it was just kind of bubbling up, and then the years after I left is when it got real crazy and kind of shut down the program. And, or, you know, football players didn't want to come and play at San Francisco State anymore because they were afraid games might be canceled or demonstrations. And we had this image of a very liberal campus. And football tends to be somewhat conservative. So after that strike, we start losing recruits. Parents didn't want to send their sons, their sons to San Francisco State protest period was a really tough time during the Vietnam War uh, for a lot of colleges, but I think particularly for San Francisco State and particularly for, for Vic Rowan at that time, it became much more difficult to get players because the culture changed, uh, the environment changed, the recruiting changed, the whole kind of things changed in the conference and uh, it became much more difficult to sustain a, a winning program. Take more than a strike, the kind of problems we had on campus. Title IX eliminated the program here because the university chose to eliminate football because of the numbers involved. It being in a polarizing city, you know, um, equality, you know, Title IX comes and, and much needed, mind you. But, you know, it, 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 had its, it had its downsides because we didn't have a big athletic budget. So to make everything equal, you know, football is probably the one thing that probably costs the most money. And then that, that in itself, economically, was kind of the thing that was kind of closing the door. I got some coach, you know, why didn't you move on to like bigger colleges? And he had other opportunities, but his loyalty to SF State, it was his, when I say his school, um, he had a love and passion for SF State. You know, Coach Ron always told me, he said, Lamont, there's three things in football that will give you success and will give you success in life. Your loyalty, your preparation, your diligence to what you do, and having a good last name. And he said, you know, taking care of that. Um, and he had honesty and moral standards that were just unbelievable. I tell people, he, he taught me to value and appreciate ice cream. I mean, he made the simplest things meaningful. My father, Vic, is, uh, was so committed to his love for football that nothing stood in his way of learning football. And so I'm sure there were, would be times where my mom, Selma, would feel, you know, I, I wish Vic was home more or Vic would just take a day off. That wasn't my father, Vic. My father, Vic, was committed to learning as much as he could, to uh, promoting the profession as much as he could. Much as this is about Coach, and he's tremendous, this is a lot about Selma Rowan, too, because she was absolutely our biggest fan. And, um, you know, you couldn't fool her, because, you know, guess what? Being married to Coach Rowan, she just didn't watch football to watch football. She learned how to foot, foot, football and how to watch football. She'd make, I mean, you know, she was great for coach because she took care of everything. I mean, she took care of all the fine, everything for the finances of the family on, on down, she took care of so that he could coach. I mean, that's what, that's what he loved to do. And she gave him that opportunity to do that. Now, I, I would tell you that Selma influenced both uh, in a big way, more coach Rowan than when I got there and the coaches more than maybe the players by the time I got there. They don't make 
football wives like that anymore. I mean, she would, when we went on trips, um, she would go to the bank and they gave us like, it would be like, you know, like $6 and 32 cents. So she would go to the bank, get the money, count out $6 and 32 cents, put that in each envelope, about 60 envelopes with everybody's name written on it and would be out at the bus before we left handing that out unbelievable I mean you know uh, she she was she was just a, a tremendous a tremendous a tremendous uh, woman she was she's phenomenal he loved his kids Bruce Keith Elise um, he loved them they supported them they shared their dad with, with with his love football and I think that when you have a wife that's supporting you like that and kids your young your children who um, at times, <laughs> reluctantly at times, but they, at the end of the day, they support your love for football. That helps you sustain uh, success and an and, and, and ability to keep going. It was getting harder and harder to maintain. It was getting harder and harder to maintain and to maintain a winning program. And so um, my, dad, my dad would never want to retire. He's not oriented that way. To answer your question, and I'm going to avoid the issue of being forced out. But what I would say is, he would he would never he would never quit SF State. He would never quit the programs. We literally moved boxes, and we were as we were moving boxes from upstairs down to the little office. They they put him on the side of the building. You know, we 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 were we were just thinking about, you know, it's like taking information from history like Smithsonian and a museum like that and putting it into a, a closet never to be never to be seen again. That was his life, his heart and soul, uh, football and football at San Francisco State. I knew it wouldn't be the same because everybody brings their own personality to the program. You, you know, you, you, you become your personality and your values and beliefs become the program. So it, it was going to change. I knew it was going to change. That last year of coaching, we players knew it. We all knew it, and we just we just went at it. And uh, I, I think, matter of fact, I know, Coach smiled more than he ever did. I think he finally told himself, you know, Vic, you know, job well done. And, and he enjoyed us. He enjoyed football. Coach Rowan, flat, loved football, and the young men and the men that he touched and he was able to bring them together to make these masterpieces, if you will, of all these different guys, of all these different teams. He was able to give each one of us our own masterpiece of memories of playing for him. I would say as a legacy to Victor Rowan, he impacted people's lives. And that was very important to him that those members of his extended family at SF State would come back to say thank you and to tell them how much they loved him. That meant the world to him. Ended the way it ended when and he couldn't get a hold of him. 
you know, I mean, that was just, he, he wanted to get him. And, and, uh, and, and so that was probably the best story.